Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my review for Doctor Who Series 9, Episode 9, Sleep No More. If you haven't already seen the episode, I suggest you watch it before watching this review because... Spoilers. Let's be honest here. Sleep No More was not the best rated episode of Doctor Who. There is a lot to find negative about this episode. But let's put it into some sort of perspective here. It was placed ninth in the series, following four two-part stories, which is unprecedented in The New Who, and is pretty much unprecedented in Doctor Who in general. And these episodes have been spectacular. Major guest stars, major effects, and extremely convoluted plot lines with lots to think about, and lots of new information leading to what I presume will be the finale. And, as is so often the case with long-running series, when other episodes become spectacular with big effects, they overrun. There is always going to be a time when an episode suffers from limitations. There's many ways this can happen. Obviously, there's the financial situation, budgets overrun. There's also times when actors are unavailable. There's restrictions on filming in certain locations. There might be time restraints. Lots of things can conspire to make an episode less than it could have been. And this is one such case. In Sleep No More you'll find no major guest stars, no major special effects, very little in the way of set design or in fact costume design. Even the camera work is deliberately dodgy. And I say deliberately dodgy because in Sleep No More we are presented with a new concept for the series. Instead of being asked to view an episode as if it was happening in front of our eyes, in this we are active participants in the episode. As it does, it is narrated several days after the events. And we are presented with the story in the form of security camera footage, head cam footage, and video blogs, if you like, progress reports, etc. We're on board a space station, and monsters are afoot. It's a classic monster chase scenario. Um, but the way it's filmed and the very claustrophobic nature of the camera work make it seem a lot more terrifying than it maybe should have been. In fact, you very, there are very, very few points where you actually see the monsters very clearly. And they are generic featureless monsters, uh, very reminiscent of the future zombies that were in Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. It had a lot of negativity going along with it. There was the low budget, there was very poor character development. In fact, the way we were introduced to the characters is not in any way by any character development. It's through the eyes of what they call a genetically engineered grunt, 474. Um, and we're introduced to the characters via her interface, her, rec her interface recognition system. But there is also a lot of positive things to say about this episode. The director is a world-renowned, brilliant director. Uh, Justin Malentnikov. The writer, Mark Gattis, is a Doctor Who aficionado, as far as Doctor Who writing goes. 
the atmosphere, the claustrophobic camera work, the fact that there is no music in the entire episode really benefits it. It's, it's almost as if the episode is playing into its limitations. So we haven't got a big budget, but we don't need big effects. You only need to glimpse the monsters in a glitched out video file to I think the not seeing it clearly and not being really sure of what was going on really gave it a sense of um, unsettlement um, it, it, it was a very scary uh, episode edge of your seat Alfred Hitchcock type of thing and this is what the director has done he's used all these limitations to make a episode an episode that is atmospheric unsettling unnerving scary at times but also it's slightly bottle fed um i found the the use of the the, the sleep references rather overbearing I mean, before we actually found out that they were sleep monsters created from sleep dust, we had at least four different pointers, pointers in that direction. And Doctor Who has never really needed to give four different pointers for its audience to get what's going on. So I feel as though I was rather, you know, led by the hand on that one. Because we had uh, Mr. Sandman playing over the Morpheus pods, and Mr. Sandman obviously is a euphemism for dreams Morpheus was the god of dreams and the god of sleep we had a, a Rip Van Winkle reference in that people that didn't use the pods were referred to as rips and we had the title itself which was Sleep No More which was a Shakespearean quote that Peter Capaldi says in, within the episode Sleep No More, Macbeth does murder sleep and we had all these things sort of pointing us in that, oh, it's sleep, it's sleep dust. Yeah, we only needed one of those things to really get it, I think. So, yeah, it it failed in some ways, but I don't think it was as bad as other budget episodes that have come before it, like Boomtown and Love and Monsters. Admittedly, it was no blink either. But taken away from the series, because, I mean you're looking at it from the point of view of lots and lots of really good series and then we have uh, lots of really good episodes and then we have a slightly weaker one and it seems a lot weaker than it really is compared to what is surrounding it and let's face it we've only got one episode before the finale so we're going to build up again and I think this was the purpose of this episode I think it was deliberately done to slow the tempo of the series down before the big crescendo of the finale. Because as I said, we've had lots, we've had four double episodes. We've had three different. We've had this new hybrid thing coming, which has been leading somewhere. We've had three different clues as to what the hybrid could be: Davros, a shielder and what was the other hybrid reference oh Osgood so I think this was deliberately done to slow the tempo of the series down a little bit calm us all down a little bit before the big finale and usually when that happens I'm a musician and I know music and I know when when you slow down the pace that much after a big build up the crescendo that then follows has to be massive it has to be fantastic so yeah that was my view of sleep no more on first watch it's not a great episode but once you take certain things into consideration and give it a second watch away from the other episodes of the series and just take it as a standalone story I think it holds up as good as any other standalone story of the revived Doctor Who 
thank you for watching I will see you when we face the raven until then goodbye